don't get too comfortable. We need you to come up here. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, yes, we yes, but no further ado, yes. The man himself, Don, only in America, King. Don King. I'm just glad to be here, and we're going to have a sensational, a sensational evening of boxing. And that's what really counts, count giving the people what they want. So I am very pleased to be home again, and I'm delighted to bring home six title fights. I mean, and to give people a chance to have some fun again. A moment of respite from... Uh, that COVID-19 pandemic. No one should take it lightly. It should be much better if you take the vaccination and the shot, wear your mask and social distance, and not need it than to need it and not have it. So, you know, all the argument and all the politicizing of the, of the uh, pandemic got us all confused. We're all fighting each other, confused with the mandates from our leadership and weak leadership. And it's, uh, it's very, very difficult around the world that we you know, left Afghanistan like we did. Our credibility has been, has been hurt all the way around the world. So it's a really a, a debacle that us, it will live in infamy. But we're here to give you a moment of respite. Say, hey, everybody, let's have some fun. <laughs> you don't live it once and when you're dead, you're done. Right. So let the good times roll. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I wanted to do is to give us a moment of respite. No matter whether you're young or old, let the good times roll. Right. And we're going to roll on Saturday night, the 29th, at the Packard Music Hall for Live and Living Color to be on the scene. And, but if you're going to check it out on the screen on donking.com for the pay-per-view. So you will see the uh, title fights on pay-per-view. You can be with your friends and your family to be safe at home and do like you used to do. Have some fun. Enjoy yourself and, and watch some spectacular boxing that's going to take place. Because this is a uh, a situation where we're going to be reaching for the future. Here comes the champion now. Yes, the dreamer. He dreamed. He dreamed and it came true. Now he got to fulfill the prophecy of the dream. That's Trevor Branch, y'all. You know, that's the dream. So we're going to be here with all these young men, these great gladiators, that's going to be able to demonstrate to friend and foe alike that they are here to make a name for themselves, but they haven't forgot from whence they come. They know what it means to be a champion, to give back to the community, to, be, to relate and identify with the people because the people are the most important. And so we can take that narrative and momentarily set it aside. You know what I mean? We know we can't push it away because it's serious. It's really serious business. But momentarily set it aside so that we can have an opportunity to enjoy our friends and family and to enjoy a blockbuster evening of boxing with six title fights, a co-feature main event, uh, and we're going to be able to deal with that, and that's what we're going to do right now here uh, in this beautiful hotel, and then we're going to be able to deal with it in the, to you and, and all the fans that y'all going to carry the word to around the world. So I'm very excited about that. And my superstar... Uh, compadre, or I should say, I don't know how I would do it in Spanish, you know, but I'm talking about Christy Martin, <laughs> Christy Salters Martin now, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have her with me, and it started many, many years ago, and she's in here to, you know, to, to fulfill the prophecy of greatness, you know what I mean, and so if you haven't seen her, her, her uh, documentary on Netflix, I think it's a good opportunity to see it, you know, because it's a hallmark in itself. So here we go. We're here now with these fights. The, the, the main event is a, it's a young man 
And he's a tough young man. And uh, he is the cruiserweight champion of the world. And he's, he's, he's you know, they, Alunga Jr. They say the old Jr. And he is uh, Macabu. He's the, he's the cruiserweight champion. And he's going to be taken on by a silver, a WBC silver uh, champion, number one challenger, number one contender that's going to be trying to take that title from Macabu, and, uh, and that's Tapiso, you know, Makunu. And so we're going to have that event, which is the true main event of this evening. And uh, when the WBA approved uh, Trevor fighting since Shaw could not make it, uh, the fight that he has, which is Jonathan Super Sensation from Louisiana, uh, Gidry. So, but let me start right out now with this super main event that we have, and let me introduce to you, and to the world, a young man that is a dynamic, a dynamic uh, cruiserweight champion, uh, Mr. Junior. Where are you at, Junior? Oh, here we go, Junior now with this smile. Come on, Junior champion. Talk to the people and tell them what they can expect to see about when you get in that ring. Love you, my man. Thank you, thank you, love you. Thank you. I hope everyone knows who I am, and I start saying thank you to God who gave me this opportunity to be here today in front of you guys. And I'm also saying thank you to Dunkin' Production for making this event happen, because plenty even you was disturbing by COVID and as we got that grace to be here and God give us the opportunity to defend our title and this event to happen on the 29th. I don't have much to say. I just want to we can say good luck to my opponent Tabisho Chunu because it's the second fight I'm fighting now. And uh, thanks to all who come to support us. Thanks to my team, Damien Durand Tarek Sadi, Komotal Yoyo, and uh, my trainer Kisolo Kele, which is on this way coming here from home. I love you guys. Thank you and enjoy on the 29th. Thank you. Thank you. you know, he, has a, he got a great history here with uh, Macabu because he comes from, he's a little baby, I guess. I don't know if he was even born. No, he, don't, he wasn't even born when we had the uh, rumble in the jungle. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because see, that's 50 years ago. <laughs> well, he comes from uh, he from what they now call the the, uh, uh, the what is it the National Republican Democratic Zaire, yeah Zaire. When we talk about Silver Zaire, and that was where I put on the Rumble in the Jungle with Muhammad Ali and George George Foreman. And uh, and uh, what's exciting about this match here is everybody is trying to get in the way to try to stop it, but uh, uh, Camillo. Is the, is, the, is the the big carrot that's standing out in front of the horse where they're running around chasing the carrot. And another, the one who win this fight, have an opportunity, hopefully, to uh, meet Canelo, because Canelo challenged Macabu for the crown. And, uh, and uh, so he wants to get that cruiserweight title. And all of my compadres, Lonesome Bob, you know, he's out there trying to give him something different in this young kid, this new kid on the block. Is, uh, his daddy was a good friend, Barry, Barry Hearn. Now, little junior, Eddie Hearn, is doing the best he can with what he has to work with. And so <laughs> I just give him all the praise, you know what I'm saying? Keep on keeping on, Eddie, you know what I mean? I love you. <laughs> but but uh, the Canelo is, uh, is, is going to be there, and, and everybody wants to think for him now to tell him what he should or should not do when he's the one that called out Ma uh, Macabo. You know, Macabo didn't go for him, and I didn't go for him. Uh, he came to us. So we are ready to accommodate him, <laughs> and we're going to do that. And the man on the other side of that table, oh, but I ain't said nothing about this guy, Tariq. Tariq is the manager. He's a sports manager. He's the manager of, uh, uh, of Macabu. Uh, he's a guy that really is very tedious. You know? yeah, he's a guy that's uh, tenacious, dedicated, committed, you know what I mean? And, you know, you know, if you didn't love him, he would give you a hard time. 
your feelings would be all frustrated and combusted and whatever. But I, since I understand what hard work and dedication and loyalty means, I just take off my hat to this guy. He's from France, you know, Monsieur, Monsieur, Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. You know what I mean? <laughs> to Mr. Tariq Sadiq. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, here's the guy that's on the other side. This is desperation. And what many people don't understand, they say, nobody knows these fighters. They got to understand, you used to didn't know Muhammad Ali. You didn't know George Foreman. You didn't know any of them until you get the word opportunity. The star of this show is what America's all about, the land of opportunity, and to be able to fulfill that prophecy, to give opportunity to those who are yesterday's nobodies, tomorrow somebody. And so when you get opportunity to put able to describe and illustrate and demonstrate your uh, skills and your physical prowess and your ability to think and your, also your loyalty and dedication and commitment to your country and to your people, that's something kind of wonderful. That's what we call SKD in the vernacular of the ghetto. <laughs> and so what we want to do here is a young, young man that's going to be the foe. And he is uh, also coming from South Africa. And uh, he's uh, here today to demonstrate to the world that he is capable, that he is challenging, and he didn't come to lay down. He came to try to win because he jumped right on me to say, well, what if I knock out uh, Macaboo? Uh, am I going to get Canelo? You know, well, Canelo didn't ask for you, but I'm certain if Canelo wants that title and you are fortunate enough to perform a miracle, and knock out Macabu, then he would be the winner. And he said, well, sh well, well, Sean, you know, that's his distinguished manager, and Sean says, well, just put it down that we want to be able to, the winner win. And so I talked to the illustrious uh, son of my dear friend that, who never died, his spirit still lives on, Jose Suleiman Shagnon, and uh, he said, okay, we're going to make it the winner. You know, the winner that uh, fights uh, gets that carrot uh, called uh, Saul Canelo, who is the, one of the greatest Mexican fighters around, and the only thing you're missing with him is me, because I am Mikasa Sukasa, I'm a Mexicano, you know what I mean, and I've been able to deal with all of the days of Cinco de Mayo, you know what I mean, and September the 15th when we got the independence, you know what I mean, and fighting with them, Juan Benito Suarez, you know, and so we're going to be able to pull together Mexico from Emiliano Zapata to Pancho Villa, you know what I mean, who fights for the people. So this is a fight for the people. And allow me to the pleasure to introduce this young man who's seeking, a, you, a, what do you call it, anonymity uh, today, but he's going to brush it away for the bright, illustrious, bright sunshine of tomorrow. Uh, come on up here, Mr. Tapiso. You know what I mean? He was, come on up here, because he's there. He's the silver champion uh, of uh, the WBC. Here you are, Tapiso McCoonle. Right. Afternoon to everyone. Uh, well, thanks to Don King Promotion for making this possible. Uh, thanks to everyone who's here who made it today. With all that, with all this going on around the world, and here we are today. And uh, well, I can't say much now. The hard work has been done. So yeah. Come fight night, and uh, I'm ready to go. And all the best to every fighter who's fighting on Saturday night. Thank you. Thank you, Abiso. You can see the anticipation is growing now. The fever is beginning to rise because the reality is setting in. You know, we've been talking trash and talking back and forth now. And while they get ready, and we've had many problems, but one thing we have demonstrated to the world, if there ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough to stop us when we get on the trail of journey of life that we have to go out there and to deal with. I don't know the word quit. I totally er eradicated the word failure from my vocabulary. Setback every now and then, failure never. And so we have here that main event with the, with the golden carrot, uh, with uh, with uh, with the winner, seeking uh, uh, or just being there, because the other guy is seeking the title because he done won the light heavyweight title. Uh, he's a unified middleweight champion, a super middleweight champion. He's a really uh, has multiple champions, and so 
he will bring um, mucho dinero to the table. You know? <laughs> I guess the feeling is so good when I'm talking about M O N E Y. <laughs> so anyway, that's for the main event, the major main event. Now with the WBA, we have had so many different problems. Like this, a year ago today, um, the fight Saturday night will be the same date, January 29th, that this young man, uh, the WBA gave us a, a approval to uh, fight that day uh, for the WBA uh, uh, heavyweight title. And that was this young man, the dream. Uh, so now, this a year later, we come back with the same opportunity again, only we were caught up with a lot of different distortions of truth uh, on the last year. Uh, but again, this young man could not make the, the immigration, the, home, the Homeland Security would not uh, okay him to come in. And so uh, the WBA again stepped up to the plate and uh, put a, a young man that's uh, from Louisiana, you know, come from the shrimp boat, from the shrimp boat to, you know, to what could be, would be, should be, well, however it may be that, they get to be the heavyweight champion of the world. So he does have the opportunity. And the dream is a young man that we've been with for years and got a great training in, in the manager and Stacy uh, McKinley, who trained Mike Tyson and all the big guys, you know, I mean, he was there, you know. So, but let me stay with this here with me. I want to bring you up a guy that had a dream. And his dream was the American dream. One man, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. You know what I mean? Endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights among these which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This young man fulfills that dream. He, don't, he lives it, not just talk it. And this dream that we put down as the, found, the founding principles of this great nation called America to make them the bright light of freedom around the world, even though we have not reached that yet, we are aspiring and pursuing it, and uh, we want to, we will, what we say, we shall overcome. So, but I want to bring this dream up here that emanates and imitates uh, what America really is truly all about when you have belief in all the fighters up here. They may not be from America, but they got that American dream. They got it because they seen it in the lights that was in the, in the changing of the times. So let me bring you the heavyweight champion of the world, uh, the man with a dream, and now the dream has been uh, fulfilled to the extent that he is the heavyweight champion. Now to be known, he has to be able to dedicate himself, commit himself tenaciously with determination, without any ambiguity, to, to show the world that you're talking about Tyson Fury, talking about Deontay Wilder, you know, you're talking about all of these guys that uh, uh, are using, you know what I mean, you won't be talking about Trevor, the dream, Brian. So let me bring the heavyweight champion of the world up here and bring it into the American dream. It's Trevor, Trevor, the dream, the American dream. Yes, Brian. Thanks, Doc. All right, baby. Hey, cool. All right, how we doing, folks? Um, again, as Don King just said, um, yes, I am Trevor Bryan, the WBA heavyweight champion. Um, I'm here to stay. I'm here to keep proving myself. Um, I have a strong opponent in front of me, Jonathan Gidrick. I appreciate him being out here. Um, it's a big opportunity for him as well. And we're going to um, show it out for you guys out here in Ohio. And I thank you guys in Ohio for allowing Don King to bring this here for you guys and showcase all this talent that we have on the stage right now for the whole world to see. Um, again, I'm not going to talk long. It's been a long road. A lot of hearsay, this and that, but I'm here to stay. And it won't be long now. How long? Not long. How long? Not long? It won't be long now. So again, I'm Trevor Bryant, and I'm here to stay. I'm the dream. Well, you heard it right there from the lion's mouth. He was the dream. Now, is the other guy is the dream breaker? He said he could. He gave you a nightmare in the dream. And it's what he intends to do because he don't. Not only has they suffered the the hazards of the storm and the act of God down there in Louisiana, you know, where the wind just took away their homes and everything else. 
So he rededicated himself and, and redoubled his effort, you know what I mean, to be able to be the sensational uh, Jonathan Gittry from Louisiana. And, uh, but for Louisiana, it was the first in bringing the rock and roll uh, harbinger to the four and a guy named Lloyd Price. You know, Lordy, Lordy, Miss Claudia, personality, you know what I mean? I want to get married. And then you had more so singing uh, that song, you know what I mean, uh, uh, Stagger Lee, you know, where they're fighting over the woman, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, so Louisiana is, is really sparkling, you know what I mean? Because Lloyd Price, after serving in the American Army, uh, broke, the, uh, the, broke the ribbon that says rhythm or rock and roll, you know, whatever it is, rhythm and blues, you know, by, by coming out with all these songs beforehand out of Louisiana, and now carrying the banner will be the young man that I'm about to introduce is, uh, is the uh, sensational uh, Jonathan Gettry from Louisiana. And, and working on the shrimp boats all day and night and, and getting it in, you know what I mean? And so now he's, he's shrimp fishing. And so <laughs> whether he get a mother load or not, it remains to be seen on Saturday night, Janu January 29th. You can get it here at the, see it here at the, uh, Packard Music Center, a music hall, or you can check it out on the screen with the, with the uh, uh, DonKing.com uh, uh, pay-per-view. And so we, it was so important that I had to import one of my agents from the uh, UK, uh, uh, Kimmy Zabion, uh, who was uh, uh, super with the camera and, and with the pen, you know what I mean, and create stories and put them out around the world so it's got all over England now. And we're trying to get Boris out of trouble because Boris is in trouble, you know. He's up on Downing Street there. So we get this fight. Gives him a moment of relief, you know what I mean, so people won't be jumping on him about what he did or did not do and what he said and did not say, you know what I mean. So, and so Boris is very happy. He's very, he's very happy that I brought the fight. And he was happy to send his star reporter, uh, Kimmy Zavion, who broke down and came on over here and volunteered to be a part of this great show. So now, let me bring to the stand... This man who is the sensational Louisiana kid. He's a tough guy and he understands what opportunity means. And let him tell you. No, let me tell you. Let him tell you. Jonathan Gittry. Sensational Jonathan Gittry. Louisiana. Yes. Lordy, lordy, Miss Clark. How y'all doing? Uh, ain't much to say. All the hard work's done. I'm just glad we got an opportunity. Thank Don King and uh, Brian's team for us to uh, display some talent. And uh, we just thankful to be out here to shock the world. That's all I have to say. Woo! It's like charging up San Juan Hill. You know, to speak soft but carry a big stick. You know what I mean? Oh, boy. Yes, indeedy. Yeah, so he's going deep sea fishing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he may not be able to master the shock that has got to be there. You know, I was just informed that our illustrious mayor is here, and I do want you to say, uh, uh, greet him. I mean, it's Mayor Franklin, Doug, you know, he's a, he's a tremendous guy. But let me introduce him to you, because he's the mayor, and he welcomed us to uh, his city to us to book the show. Mayor Franklin, yeah, Mayor. Come on, come on over here, Mayor Franklin. Yes. Oh, boy, we got them all. That's, that's what we show, giving, giving the, everything, you know, we the people, you know. And that's what I am, a promoter of the people, for the people, and, and by the people. My magic lies in my people tag. The Honorable, the Honorable, young man, Matt Frank. Right. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how honored I am as mayor. I got something to give you from my office, but I, I just got to say, first of all, it's impossible to follow Don King at a microphone, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I want to just tell you how honored we are as a community. I do have Jim Bogos, from, who's the manager at the Packer Music Hall, uh, who's here with us and has been working hard to make sure everything goes well. My safety service director, uh, chief of staff, is also here, and his wife, Amanda. Um, but we're very proud and very happy and honored to be hosting this event. I can't believe that, you know, I can believe it because I know what we're about. Um, but I'm so thankful for you, 
Mr. King for letting us be the host of this great event that will be seen by boxing fans worldwide. And who would have thought that Warren, Ohio would be the host? I also want to thank Christy and Ray as well. But, um, and also, you, you hit it on the head when you first started speaking about um, how tough our communities have been um, hit with this COVID-19 virus. And I thought that was my speech, Don, but I'm glad you, <laughs> I'm glad you, I'm glad you talked about how safety and, and, and the need for respite is, uh, is very needed in our community. So Saturday night, to all of the boxers and, and everybody around the world, by the benevolence of Dr. King, excuse me, Don King, um, we're going to have a record number of our safety forces at the fight. Um, I think we're over 150, 170 now, policemen, firemen, healthcare workers, uh, and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart on behalf of every citizen for making this possible so that they can, and their families are coming out so they can enjoy a night out. And they've been protecting us for almost two years. So this, you are truly giving back to our community, but people don't know that's what you're about. So let, let me get to the point, because I know you got a lot to say. Um, when, we, when, when, when I said I got to get a proclamation for Don King, I, I talked to Aaron, uh, and he sent me a, a, a biography, it was 13 pages. <laughs> So I can't put 13 pages on one. So what I try to do, Mr. King, is, is sort of capsulize what people don't know about you or what people don't talk about you, your, your heart, your, your life, your spirit, your experience, your strength and hope uh, that you give so many people. So I got to put on my reading glasses for this. But I think I can do this without it. Don't worry. Hey, it's just a number. It's just a number. Yeah. Amen. Da, da, da. Young now. Yes. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so this this starts out as whereas Don King, who coined the phrase only in America, he lives it, he breathes it, he believes it. It is part of his soul. King's career as promoter spans four decades and includes more than 600 world championship fights. But it began as a humble plea to help save a Cleveland hospital in 1972. Don established the Don King Foundation, which has donated millions of dollars to worthy causes and organizations. As a self-reminder self of the economic hardship he endured growing up, King has gone in the neighborhoods every holiday season and personally handed out turkeys to needing families. And we're working on Debbie with something, just so you know, do some Thank things you. around here. Thank you. Thank you. Whereas cities have declared Don King Day and have presented him with official proclamations for behind the scenes contributions he has made toward many community projects, King is an American ambassador of peace and goodwill throughout the world. He has met many presidents and world leaders promoting America and world peace. And whereas currently, at the ripe age of 90, King has no plans of slowing down. And you showed that to me today. He gives credit for, for who he is today to the most important woman in his life for his rise from the Cleveland Projects to his mother, Hattie, who taught him the difference between right and wrong. And for whatever success and achievements that he has accomplished, to his wife, Henrietta. He has often stated that without her enduring love, help, and support, he could not have reached his levels of success that we see today. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, William Doug Franklin, Mayor of the City of Warren, do hereby proclaim this day, January 26, 2022, as Don King Day in the City of Warren. And I'm asking all of the citizens in Warren to help cel celebrate in, in this great celebration. Congratulations and God bless you. I'm going to put this right. No, let's get, let me get a picture here. Let me get a picture here. Let's get a picture here. From Ohio, guys, come, right. over, come on over here. Okay, and we get Governor go. DeWine. I want to say to Governor DeWine, you're doing a great job, Governor. Yes. And we want you to continue to do that. So I want to be all praise going to Governor DeWine, and I'm inviting him to the fight, too. I hope he can make it. Yes. 
Congress going to be there. Yes, and the congressman, you say, oh, Tim my God, yeah, it's so yeah. wonderful. Yeah, we got to Yes, it's so wonderful. Out. Oh, God thank bless you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. The people, that's what it's all about with me. The people are the most important assets. Innovation and imagination is my tools and togetherness for a better America is my goal. And so let's come together. Working together works. And we are going to be able to demonstrate that to the world coming out to Ohio at the Packard Music Hall uh, for live and on the site. And we're going to televise it uh, around the world on uh, pay-per-view uh, where it will be um, an opportunity uh, for everybody to get a chance to see and witness their hometown fathers as well as getting recognition for their fame, acclaim, and affluence, but more importantly, not forgetting from whence they come. The dope the road to where you come. And when he's speaking about my mother, that's why I'm an advocate for women's rights, because without the, without the women, you wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? And so that's the, uh, that's the flaw that they have in white supremacy, is that the white woman is looked upon as inferior because you never know what she's going to do or say. That's what they said in the days of old. And, uh, and, but yet, if she's inferior and you spring from her loins, you got to be inferior too. You know what I mean? Because you judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a thing that here, and that's what makes this country great, that we can discuss these type of things without animosity and hostility and anger, but hate is working all the time. And so we have a great thing there. And uh, I was charged with, with, with crimes that I had no, 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 no way I could have committed. But nevertheless, I have to thank God because we had a, 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 a governor who, who reduced the charge for me, uh, uh, you know, basically because he said it wasn't, it wasn't possible. But nevertheless, he put his reputation in, on the line, and it's, they, they sent me to the Ohio Penitentiary. They said it's going to give me shock probation. It was a true shock, too. You know, because, you know, I had never been arrested, so they're going to give me 30 to 90 days, and I can show people that you ain't supposed to do no crime, you're supposed to do the right thing. And they give me, I end up doing four years. <laughs> So, but I made the time serve me. I educated myself in the penitentiary. And when I come out of the penitentiary, they had to, the, the good citizens of Cleveland it was there waiting for me to tell me about the hospital called Forest City Hospital that was, was going to be closed down uh, for lack of funds and whatever. And uh, would I please come and promote a fundraiser uh, for the hospital or Forest City Hospital? And usually they run from a fella, you know, an ex-con, that the, 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 news, the news media, you know, make it something, you know, that is uh, it's in, it's not tolerable, you know. And so it's always be a criminal, you know, if you're going to get association, you know what I mean, uh, by being close to them. Well, they was there waiting for me. And I had another friend called Muhammad Ali. And so I called Muhammad Ali. They come in and box five or six guys. And, and, and in so doing, you know what I mean, he would, uh, you know, we would raise money for this hospital and to put the hospital's plight on the, on the spot so that, you know, that Goodyear and, 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 and all of the tire companies, the two tire companies, came to our assistance. And we had a tremendous show there, a show for people care. And then Muhammad Ali told me, he said, you're the greatest promoter I've ever seen. He said, you should go into boxing. You know, I say, go into boxing. He said, yes. He says, uh, you know, this, that, and the other, you know. I said, okay, you want me to go into boxing? Yes. I said, then you come, let me promote you. So my first fighter was Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so, so from there, well, we made history together, and then he, he got uh, convicted, you know, for not going, step, taking that step in the Army, and he fined, you know, five years, uh, sentenced five years, you know, in, in, uh, in, 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 a, in a big fine at the height of his career, you know. And so he stood with that uh, feeling that conscientious objector. And uh, the United States Supreme Court uh, reversed the decision that the other courts had made and uh, gave America again that wonderful thing of freedom, just and equality, you know what I mean. And so Muhammad Ali then came back and then made history again with me promoting him and bringing him back 
and uh, the thrum of the thr uh, what is it, the rumble in the jungle and the thrill in Manila, you know what I mean, and made history. But the four years that he was that he was out, no one knows how really great he would have been because he was at the top of his career. Plus, he would have made millions of dollars during those four years. So you got to say, Muhammad Ali, you know, take a deep breath because you know, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. You know what I mean? So he was so fast, he could turn the switch off and get in the bed before the room got dark. <laughs> yeah, that's my man. That's my man. So everybody, everybody is rolling. And so we are, we are really pushing here, and we got a great, great show. I'm just so excited about this show, and I'm excited about these characters. Oh, yes, you got to do it, but he's the main man. You tell me about it. Mr. Bernie Profato, you know, we started our commission in Ohio. Yeah, I'm going to tell Governor Devine what a wonderful job he's doing because he's the one that made it possible. <laughs> All right, Mr. Profato. Hi, Bernie Mo. Wow. Woo. Oh, man. First of all, uh, on the behalf of Governor Dewine, he's already mentioned his name, we welcome Don King and Don King Productions. Just a couple things here. It was kind of remiss that they should run up. 1972, Don actually called me. I was a referee in this, a young referee, and he says, would you mind donating your time? We're going to do a, a, a show for this hospital. I says, Don, for you, absolutely everything. I want you to know that Don King is the only person in the state of Ohio that I have issued a lifetime license to because uh, nobody deserves it more than him. You know, and uh, a couple things that Raymond was hitting on earlier, we have these two world title fights, but I have to approve all these fights that come in through my office. This is probably the greatest overall card in the 20 years that I've been there that, that would be promoted in Warren, Ohio. I'm so honored that Don's done this. And, I would, and lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't re recognize his fine staff because it's the stuff before this. Once the fights start, you know, it's all over, but, but you got to get the people in the, in the background that does all this, that never gets credit for it. Christy and, and uh, all these people with Don uh, King's staff, and, uh, and my, uh, my two uh, uh, secretaries uh, who've been going through this uh, considerably with uh, Judy McCarty and uh, Melinda McQuaid, we couldn't have done this without them and without Don and his, and his staff. That's what makes it go, and Don... It's an honor again to be with you, my friend. Thank you, Bernie. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Fabio. Fabio, yes, and you know what? He that you know, Bonda Carson is one of my superstars. That uh, is there. You know, she took over when 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 Al Bernani and all of them got sick. You know, in the crisis in the trenches. You know, Bonda uh, rose to the occasion, and she's been there. You know, her and and she was there under the auspices of Dana Jamison, uh, who is often had. You know, unfortunately. Uh, got got con cat cancer, uh, but she's be she's defeating it just like we are. These guys are knocking out the, their opponents. Uh, she stands strong and and she's just wonderful and she's defeating it. But she had a she had a pretty a, a, what a prodigy, you know what I mean? That she had uh, taught uh, Vanda, but Vanda has uh, you know super excel. Everything is there and she's here right now to keep things going for you in the next two days and in the night of the fight and make certain that everybody get what he's supposed to have. So I'm just very pleased and honored, you know, that, uh, that Mr. Papato gave us an opportunity to uh, uh, be here in Ohio. And I was, I was, I was trying to be uh, solicited to, to go to Las Vegas and all of them people, they were calling me and trying to get me to even split the show up. But I didn't want to, this is not about money. You know, this is a show that it's about people, homecoming. It's about giving everybody an opportunity and to demonstrate that uh, the love and understanding, the wisdom is, is more important than money. Because it's academic that you're going to get paid because I have poor slavery, so I won't reinstitute it. But the idea is to be able to work together, pray together, and stay together is what it was all about. And I felt if I did anything to take this card away from a small arena that we have here in Ohio, vis-a-vis uh, -vis to the, the 15, 16,000 seat arena in Las Vegas, which the casino would buy most of the tickets because they want to get the people in there so they can, you know, clean them up, you know what I mean, out of their money. And, uh, and so that would have been a real, a real boom for extra money. 
but it wouldn't carry the message that we're carrying right now out to friend and poor alike, that people are of the most important assets. And so this is a fight for the love of the people. And so we got the people that's yesterday's nobodies will be tomorrow's somebody's. So these six men, uh, winners, will be standing up and as a, the, with Gary Shaw, the nice uh, uh, chairman of the WBA, chief of staff, and he's the chief of uh, the NABA. He's been very gracious because some of the fighters have been pulled off the card and there's been a lot of switching back and forth uh, to get the fights on, on the card. And, uh, but we have still got them and we're still going, we're still holding on to the uh, six titles. So, and that's, that's because of the understanding and the appreciation of the WBA for boxing and for the N, let us say NABA, which is a North American Boxing Association. Uh, they are uh, comprised of United States of America, uh, Canada, and uh, uh, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico was like uh, my second home. People Puerto Rico. And so we had, <laughs> we had, a, we had a real ball there. And because Chito Trinidad, you know, it was one of one of the superstars of a uh, of uh, boxing, and he hailed from uh, Puerto Rico. And so we are uh, we've had a good show, a good life, a good time, and we're going to have a great time here in 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 Ohio. And so, uh, and my club, my beloved city of Cleveland, is just a, a few steps away. And I didn't want to go to Cleveland because we had done what he said, what Bernie, what, what he was saying about the uh, poor city hospital. I wanted to come to Warren, some smaller town in the great state of Ohio, under the auspices of the great governor, uh, DeWine, and we are going to be able to uh, show the world uh, what can be done when you believe and have faith. And so we're building this thing show on faith. So now you got four NABA title fights, and they've been changing uh, from uh, Alonzo Johnson. Uh, he said he had a stroke or something. I don't know what he had, you know what I mean? But they come up with more, more stories than anyone ever seen. If you ever want to find out something that's uh, different, get into boxing, because you, know, you can hear some tales that you, you know, <laughs> it's unreal, you know what I mean? <laughs> you see, and all the great writers in the world you couldn't make up these kind of things. You know? But anyway, he was, he was gone, and then uh, we were going to try to put in uh, a substitute for him, and uh, the WBA wouldn't approve him. Uh, some of them, and they approved, but nevertheless, they did approve, so we're going to have uh, the heavyweight gold uh, title fight, but you got some of Cleveland's own, you know, a young man fighting for the middleweight championship of the world, uh, and, uh, and not the world, for the NABA, and his name is Michael Moore. Is Michael Moore here today? Yeah, well, I want to bring up, this is a homie. This is a homie, and we're going to get Michael Moore up here so he can say he gonna, what he's going to do and what he's going to do for the city of Cleveland, because that's what's, uh, uh, and the state of Ohio, we're going to make things good. So I'm going to introduce to you uh, Michael Moore. You may not know him today, but you'll know him tomorrow. Michael Moore. Thank you, God. Thank you. First off, I want to say thank you to Don for the opportunity. Uh, some of y'all may know me. Uh, I fought on the con Contender Season 5. Uh, I did my thing. I walk it like I talk it. You know, uh, I ain't got much to say, you know, because... Uh, the hard work has been done. You know, I did it in the gym. Uh, the fight should be easy. Uh, thank you to the opponent. Uh, who I'm fighting? Let me see who you're fighting. I think, let me see. Let me see where you're Michael Moore in the middleweight there. Mm, okay, you're fighting Anthony Link. Okay. Uh, Anthony Link. I think he should, you know, as long as he come and uh, he's prepared to to make it a barn burner, we should, we should, we definitely should steal the, we still, yeah, still the show. Come on, come on up here, Nick. Yeah, come on up here, Nick. We'll meet the guy. He don't know who you is. You're going to tell him who you is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's Nick. Yeah, that's good. That's camaraderie before the bill. Yes, all right. That's it. Yeah. Get, get in. Like I say, no, uh, come on. Hold it. Hold it. Come on, Nick. Come, come, come over here on this side, Nick. All right. Now you're going to Nick. All right. Here they are. Here you are. Get your shot, man. Get your shot. Get your foot up. There you go. Now you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now you just hold that and let him talk and then I'm let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, we see. You know, I just, uh, I'm looking to have fun in there. You know, uh, as everybody know, you know, when I come to fight, 
nonstop. You know, I done fought a fight. I fought three fights with a torn bicep tendon, you know. Uh, so there's nothing that's going to stop me. When we get in there, we're going to definitely put on the show. If he game, we putting on the show. So, you know, uh, get you on the face shields and all that so, you know, it, it don't get on you if you're close. All right. Okay, here's the man that he didn't know. Come on, Link. Yeah, he didn't know him. So now he do know him. And so he will see what they're going to do just after they meet and greet. You know what I mean? Here he is, y'all. And the Link. So I want to thank God first and foremost. I want to thank my team. We had a tough camp. We went hard. We had a hard grind. I want to thank my gym. My gym helped me out deeply with the ins and the outs of everything and through, through the life, you know. Thank my girl for the day to day because you know that grind. Eating, meals, preparation, everything. Leaving at the, the drop of a hat. I had to just drive here this morning just because I didn't know about this. <laughs> so I just got here, got here in time, everything, but job is done. We did our we did our homework. We did everything we needed to do for the camp to get prepared for the camp, and we're gonna put on a good show. So, cause this this white boy can fight. Have a good one. Alrighty, alrighty. Yeah, yeah. You're getting it right from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Okay. All right, so what they, I, just, I just got word from uh, Kimmy that the, that the crowd wants to see a face-off with the champions, so uh, we do that face-off with the champion before I go to the other three uh, uh, NABA fights. So let's get, let's get uh, uh, Macaboo. Macaboo and, 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 and Macaboo and uh, uh, Tabiso. Yeah, let's get a face-off. Let's get a face-off so everybody can see it around the world. You know what I mean? Ain't no love lost here, baby. And I get over where you can get y'all get over here so, get, so you can get the picture there. Come on. Yeah, yeah. There he is. There he is. This is a face off, y'all. There he is. Yes. Uh, y'all got it? Wait, get, no, wait, no, hold it. They, they, they want to see it. Yeah, they want to see it. Oh, look at this, man. Look at this. Look at the thing. Look at the thing, man. Yeah. Yeah, how long? Not long. <laughs> All right, okay, that's it for that. Now let's get the let's get the heavyweight, the heavyweight, uh, the dream, the dream, and 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 and, and our guy from Louisiana. Yeah, the heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get this face up with the heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Can we do one step forward? Can we remove that that chair? Yeah, take that chair. And then we yeah. we go a little forward. Okay, we get a little forward up there. All righty, all righty. That's David Martin, y'all. That's my photographer from around the world. David Martin. Yeah, he hit me in the air snow well. Yeah, the crane that was back there many, many moons ago. Huh? Okay, y'all face off. Go on and get y'all thing together. Yeah, the shrimp, the shrimp boat man. It it's COVID out here, bro. <laughs> hey, guess what? What did the guy say to the monk when he got his tail cut off? Won't be long now. Won't be long now. <laughs> All right, you got the you got the heavyweights uh, face off, so they can get around and see what they're doing. And uh, we got the uh, we got to see what we got here with these other NABA titles. I know I know that the one Alonzo Butler pulled out. And we put up a we put up a guy that the, the WBA wouldn't approve, and so we let that slide. So we got somebody else at, uh, right there. But uh, what? Can we do all the face Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go with the let's go with the MMA. So we got uh, we got uh, we got Cody Wilson and three three uh, Trey Sean uh, Wiggins. Okay, let's set them all up in there because y'all gonna see them. And in in, in, in what we got, the only one that the, the one that's fighting the heavyweight ain't here yet, but he's been okayed by the WB, the WBA, right. and right. his right. name right. is right. the Carrie Scott. Right. There you go. Yeah. 
Okay, who's the next one? Wiggins and Wilson. Wiggins and Wilson. All right. This is going to be a great evening of boxing. Championship boxing. Only in America. Okay. Okay. Hey, I love you guys, man. I love you guys. You guys are real great gladiators. Yes, okay. Who else is there? Who? Langston Kissner. Kissner and Langston. All right, bring him on up here. Oh, yeah, Langston, yeah, this is the cruiserweight. Yeah. Johnny, take your mask down. Okay, guys. Y'all get it on, Lincoln and Link. Y'all get it on. <laughs> we have one more decay. Come in, Pepsi, and his boy on his way. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah